already <coughs> in session, um, and we're going to start you here. Uh, before we do the salute to the flag, we might have company doing that. Let me say a few words before the salute to the flag. We're so proud of our children. As you know, there's a weekly news program. Yes. Can, can everyone hear me? It's a buzz. There's a big buzz from the loudspeaker there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. Sorry, Carl. Thank you. And the pressure I think. Okay, I'll, let me talk over that. I'll try to talk over that. We're very proud of our children. There's a weekly broadcast that goes out every week to every classroom. <coughs> K right up to sixth grade and the news program is produced by children for children and what we'd like to do is we start each board meeting with uh, one of the broadcasts during the month it gives you an idea of what the children are talking about with each other but we turn off the cameras I'm sorry TV audience but we turn off the cameras we don't want to identify children with this here and uh, and we do our pledge during that time also Agenda. Um, does anybody have anything to extract from the consent agenda? Nope. Okay. I move approval. Second. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. PTO update. Three. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are back from the snow. We've had two of our socials, unfortunately, were canceled due to lack of response from the children, not from volunteers. We actually had volunteers this time around, but no kids. So we had two of those canceled. We are not going to be rescheduling those. We do have uh, very positive support for the fourth to sixth grade bingo night that's going to be taking place in March, and that's a Friday night. We do bingo um, with prizes, pizza, and uh, ice cream, always. Um, Tomorrow night is our general membership meeting, and we also have in the works, um, the Girl Scouts have contacted us about doing something with the Go Green Committee, which works through the Wellness Committee. Um, and what we have decided to try to encourage them to do is organize a spring cleanup. There's been so much snow, we are sure there is tons of trash trapped in the snow that's going to be all over our campus come spring. So they are now working together with the PTO Exec Board to try to put something together for that so that we can maybe on Earth Day um, have a spring cleanup of the campus on a Saturday or something and kind of spruce everything up and get everyone outside and maybe walk the loop. So that is in the works right now. Um, in terms of parents, we'll be talking to Dr. Stella hopefully tomorrow night at the PTO meeting. There are some concerns that have been popping up now that the building upgrade has been passed, which we are all very excited about. Uh, there are concerns about, well, when's it going to start? How is it going to affect the children? What's going to happen over the summer with SEP and REC? Um, so Dr. Stella has already been <coughs> come tomorrow night to address those questions. <coughs> and that's what we have going on. So we'll see you next month. <laughs> and I wanted to say thank you to the PTO, too, for all the emails that went up about the mm. It was very <laughs> impressive. Um, and thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for getting past. Dr. Stella, you're on. Bree, did you say spring? Spring, huh? <laughs> spring. In a, an update last year, I said, last, last year I said, last year was a year like no other. <laughs> um, well, I have to say the same thing this year, and we thank everyone for their patience. We're all trying to watch out for our children and do the right thing. I, I have no control over the weather, but um, we do, we do make our calls and I hate getting up 4.30 in the morning, too, and then all the calls that we make, but we do have to make it with four districts. So again, for our new parents, it's a decision that's made among the uh, BOA districts. And a lot of consultation with a lot of people. We try our best to get the calls right. Sometimes people say great calls, and on 
that same day other people will say, why did you do it, kind of thing. So we try our best to come up with the right calls. <coughs> Instant Alert has, um, has been working over time, um, and it's a system, it's a good system in the sense that uh, people can choose how they want to get messages, whether it's email or, or I iPhone or, or whatever, but, but we, it also has a responsibility of updating what, what form of information you, you would like to get. <coughs> with the Instant Alert, there have been a, a few occasions when multiple messages have gone out. Uh, we're not going crazy at headquarters here. It's, uh, it's sometimes a glitch of the system that, uh, that we have no control over an additional message, message going out. We put one message on the runway and we're waiting, it doesn't seem like it's going out, then we might prompt it. So that will be two messages that all of a sudden come out, or three. But better to be careful with that. And there was just there was one occasion when <coughs> everybody was on such overload as far as all the schools being uh, closed that the message got out a little later than we had wanted it to. But that was more a technology glitch than anything. So what I would say is that uh, parents be aware of the fact that we put messages on the three TV stations and, and also the multiple radio stations, and it's always on our website. First call I make is, um, you know, when we know what we're doing is to Marsha. Marsha's up with me at 4, 430 there, too. Like they have to get her up. Not get her up. She's waiting for the call. <laughs> and uh, she probably has to get me up. Uh, and, uh, and she goes into action. And a number of other people, too. Rick Wood puts things on. I get in touch with him right away, too. So we have a whole team working on this. You know, a whole team working for children. And we hope spring is right around the corner. I'll be talking about makeup days in, in, in a few minutes. But what a cause for celebration there is. What a cause for celebration. On February 11th, 687 voters came out to vote. And the vast majority, two thirds or more. 511. Well, you have to notice now. Who counted? Yeah. By the way, so do you know who the first voter was? <laughs> <laughs> first but, vote. But, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity at a Board of Education meeting. First of all, thank the Board of Education for your tremendous support with this year. Over the years, present board members and past board members, and the PTO has been so intimately involved with us. The Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, the staff, the teaching staff here, regular staff, all the school constitu constituencies. I don't want to leave out anyone. And very important, the taxpayers the town. I've had a number of people who don't have children in school who came over and said that they voted yes because they knew that children needed it. And this is the kind of project that will <coughs> benefit our children most directly, but will benefit the entire town. So all of us got what we asked for. Now we'll have to deal with the multiple questions and the, and the, and the challenges that come with, uh, with, with doing a major up upgrade. So uh, we'll look forward to sharing information. What I'll tell you at this point, and it'll be an evolving thing, we anticipate, and again, um, Al and I and Greg Kula are meeting with the project map, the new project manager this coming week, but what we anticipate and what we've been promised is that the work will be done after school and in the evening, the work that between now and the end of the year, and that we will try to concentrate on things that don't directly affect the educational program at the school and then concentrate the major work, major construction work for the summer months. The, uh, and I'll get to the new calendar shortly, but the Fuller districts have been very cooperative in working with us to push the starting date to the first day after Labor Day so that we would have the entire summer. We need the entire summer to do major work so that there will not be major disruption to the educational process while the children are here. So that means starting with the last day of school, and I'll get to this in a few minutes, if the last day of school is June 20th, then we want to start on that Monday right after, in fact, the Saturday after. And, um, and the, <coughs> the company and some and <laughs> groups that are doing this have promised that they would have multiple shifts working on it. Uh, so we'll keep a close eye on and get, give information as we go along. We're also taking a look. We don't know the full extent. We don't want to put our children in any danger. So we, we know that there will be all kinds of trailers and trucks and things here during the summer. We want to get a better grasp of it. But if it's something that we have to hand over the building for that kind of major work, then we're coming up with scenarios. We're looking to come up with scenarios as far as um, 
alternate sites for our summer programs. We know that our community depends on our summer programs, and they're they're important for our children. So we'll come up with a uh, we'll come up with some different scenarios, and we're looking at some facilities uh, close to Beach Road School. So more information will follow on that. A piece of information I'd like to share with you. It's I'm so proud of this town. I have to say, even getting back to the upgrade, it's a town where there's such collaboration between the town boards, the board of education, the school district, the parents, the communities, and it's a process town. Things have to be explained. Everyone has had a chance to give opinions and so on. It's a really thinking town. But when it's for the right reason, people act with a, with a common purpose. So, so we're very, very proud of that. And we want to promote that collaboration. Today we had another example of a collaboration. Uh, I met with uh, some staff members, uh, too, and myself, with Todd Fabian, who's the director of our public library. And I mentioned this in the past. We're working at, we're taking a look at a, what I think is going to turn into a worthwhile project. We want to do a little more investigation. We're looking at uh, Mongo Premier, the next generation of language learning. And what that would mean, if it, if it materializes, and again, we want to do a little more investigation, is that for a, a very nominal price, we would be able to collaborate with a library, not, off, not only offering extended language services to our children, but to the entire town. And uh, you know, moving more towards personalized learning, 24-7 learning, and in 56 languages. So with, with one program, you'd have to pay a high cost for one language, and you have that language uh, ongoing. You couldn't change. Here you could change. And I, I asked one young lady here at school, a sixth grader, what, what language would you like to learn? And I thought she would mention one of the common ones that we have here and so on. And she said something like, uh, I think it was Lithuanian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so why, why would you want to? is a beautiful language, but why did you pick that one? Because nobody, nobody in the school knows how to speak it. Uh, <laughs> so it's a, so a, again, we want we want to really uh, try to promote, uh, and th this is a charge of the board too: global awareness, a culture of global awareness, and that means going beyond the language classroom. It means going throughout the school, it means going out into the community and really rallying everyone around a common theme. And I think this, this is something that we would really embrace. And the libraries will be a very good partner. So we'll bring you more information on that as we go along. Okay, let me go down my list here. Um, make up snow days. Now, it's not a popular topic. <laughs> so I, I approach this with trepidation. Uh, but we have a laid out plan, carefully laid out plan. And remember, we have a, a BOA partnership with all the four districts. That means with the districts that we have a transportation agreement, and we have contracts, multiple contracts in the district. So we try to come up with something, with something that, that works for our families uh, to the best that we can. We know we have families with children in the elementary, middle, and high school. So our plan for this year was this year, it was to go to June 20th, not to go to, for this year, not to go to the last week of June, and then to, if we needed more makeup days, to go to the April vacation starting with the Monday. That's written in all of our calendars. That was the agreement. So where are we now? In Woodbridge, we have seven days to make up. Okay, if you take five of those days, that brings us to June 20th. It means two days more to make up. So what I'm asking the board to do tonight is reduce the number of days that we have, 181 to 180. That's the state requirement, number one. Number two, convert the March 21st Teacher Professional Development Day to a full day for children. And uh, that would not only make up a day, but will tie us in with also with Amity that made a quick change on that too. So we're trying to trying to trying to fix that. So so as as of to if if the board were to do that, that would be our rec my, my recommendation. <coughs> if we were to do that, as of today, we would not have to go to the April vacation. However, I don't control the weather. If we have another snow day, 
<coughs> then it means going to the first day of April vacation and, uh, and moving on from there. Right? Unless we came up with a creative solution that, that we can't imagine right now. So that's the, now next year's calendar. Do you want to move on the first oh, one? Yeah, first? yeah, why don't we do that? Oh, so we move that we revise the 213 2014 calendars presented by the administration. Sorry. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, did everybody vote? Okay, all right, all right, good. Okay, and then and I want to thank and acknowledge the WEA and our administrative team and various staff members who. Uh, from our district and similar organizations from the other districts that, that collaborate and give feedback and, and then um, we have to come together and make a decision. Because of the type of arrangement we have, which, which, is a, which is not a usual one, with four districts trying to work together, um, the BOA superintendents have a responsibility of coming up with a, reaching a consensus <coughs> of coming up with a recommendation uh, for the calendar for the, for the, for the next year. It's not an easy thing to do because there are various points of view as far as when we should have this or that. So, uh, so we try to <coughs> look at it from different points of view and reach a consensus and come back with the best call that we can make on it. And uh, our recommendation uh, we bring forward to the calendar is that the first day of school start on, some of the highlights are the first day of school starts on September 2nd, the day after Labor Day. And again, that will allow us a longer summer to work on our projects. The, the Wednesday, November 27th, by contract here in Woodbridge is a PD day, professional development day, for staff, not a student day. The students will have a five-day Thanksgiving recess. Bethany Elementary School has that same PD day. They have moved with us. Amity does not, but Bethany does. And uh, so we can, we can team up with some kind of uh, joint professional development. The holiday recess, December 24th to January 4th. The winter recess uh, was shortened as it was this year, and I believe last year, to a four-day weekend, the 14th to the 17th. The spring recess from the 20th to the 24th. And the last day of school is planned for Friday, June 15th, but any snow days would be made up from June 15th on to the, uh, to the end of June. So Wait, I think that's. Emily had a question. Yeah. So is it Monday. Monday, June 15th? So the last day is a half day on a Monday? Or Barring any snow days, which. You're looking at next year? You're looking yeah. at 14, yeah. 15. Isn't that what we're talking next about? Next year? Yeah. Yeah, June 15th is <coughs> a Monday, not a Friday. Last oh, no, Friday. Friday. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Makeup days will start on, no, on, the, on the Monday. According so the last to the calendar, start according to the calendar yeah. it says that the last day of school is reported as June 15th, which is a Monday. That's what's so on the calendar in our, in our Okay. Can we have a discussion about these days? Yeah. I know that the other schools have already moved on it, but I think we need to have a discussion about it. I'm sorry? Say. Can we have a discussion about some of this and some of the flexibility or, or lack thereof that may exist? It, it's a, it's a, a unique situation because the boards legally vote on this here, have to vote on this here. Right. At the same time, we're tied into a transportation agreement that we, we have to synchronize what we're doing and what's been traditional for each of the years is that, <coughs> the, uh, that the BOA superintendents would, would come up with a, uh, with a calendar recommendation and yeah. ask the boards to approve yeah. it. Yeah, is there a reason, like for example, would Do we need a motion and a second to have the discussion? Sure. I'll move that we adopt the 2014-15 calendar as presented by the administration. Second. Okay. No discussion. So, sorry. So, just, just to clarify. In order no, to no, discuss no, no. the motion on the table. Now you're supposed to have a motion on the table in order to discuss. I'm sorry. So, just, just, though, just for clarification, Dr. Stiller, are we really saying the last day of school is a Monday, or is that just... Let me just look up the calendar here. Okay. Maybe there was That's mistake. not actually what Sandy, I wanted to talk about. Yeah, no. I didn't look. I didn't see that. You have other days you want to discuss, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, should I wait? Okay. So, for instance, since April 3rd is, I guess, Good Friday, it would seem somewhat that you could save a day, for instance, if you had spring break that week. Because what I'm really concerned about is that a lot of people go to sleepaway camp at the end of summer, a lot of people go to day camp, 
And so a lot of those camps start much before June 30th. So it seems, and it seems like very late in the school year. It seems like there might be a way of backing up the school year and not having it extend to June 30th. So, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to comment on that. That's what we did this year was the reason that we didn't go to the end of June this year and we voted to take days off of April vacation right. should we go over the excess five days. Um, and I think that that's where, so this, I have the same issue. I don't think the school should go to the end of June. And are we going to have air conditioning? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, September is actually worse than June. Right? <laughs> but, so yeah. let's just yeah. go, go ahead, Dr. Stella. You were going to say something. There's been, what I could say is there's countless discussion on this here, and there's so many different points of view. Uh, even with this year, there are many people who would rather push to the end of June rather than go to the April. So again, we have to reach a consensus with these superintendents. Right, but it, I guess it would seem like in terms of process that it might be good to have this conversation first before there's been a decision that's already been made. Because I, I guess I, cause I know that the middle school, for instance, has already gotten a, an announcement what the school year is. So I guess we're kind of in a position where you're saying we don't really have a choice because it's already been decided between the superintendents. It's well, we don't have to vote for it. If we vote against it, then that would be telling Dr. Stella to go back to the BOA superintendents and have a discussion that we don't want the calendar. No. We don't have to vote for it. I don't remember if it was, I think it was last year, but there was a survey that went out to parents too, that there was something that we were deciding whether it was going to go for April break or February break. I mean, these do seem like big issues. Like September, I mean, June 26 seems incredibly late to me. Too. I mean that that sounds kind of <laughs> so this not the whole summer, but could the decision go to parents? Could you get a consensus with the whole district? I mean, that's that what we just won that, and what we get is a, just about so what fifty yeah. fifty kind of situation. Dr. Stella, but to be, uh, yeah. there's yeah. dates being thrown yeah. around, and, yeah. and I'm confused. I yeah. thought for the calendar year next year, the last day being proposed was June 15th, not June 30th. It is. That's correct. Snow yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And so <laughs> the, 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 these are built in. Right. And that's what your concern is to go, okay, I want to make sure. If we have so 10 so snow days. So, so what happened this year was we, so <laughs> the, the letter that went out with the survey was two years ago. Right. Because we hadn't really had a plan for what to do with all these extra days. So we thought we would ask parents, but half the people who filled out the survey said take it away from February, and the other half said take it away from April, and it left us without anything. So last year when we did this year's schedule, we made a plan that said right. we would go one week into June, but we would not go any further because of the concerns over camps. And if we went past the five days that were needed in June, we would then tar start taking from April vacation, and that was the plan. So I guess my question is, why is that plan not, not the same plan for right. next year? Um, there was a lot of pushback on, on uh, not guaranteeing an April vacation. Um, and, and pushback from who? Because we're, I mean, there's just, it's, yeah. it's four boards, right? So do well from the superintendents dealing with their constituencies mm -hmm. and coming back to the table. I mean, so this to me also seems counterproductive with the building, the building because we were losing another week of next summer. So we're we're kind of pushing this whole thing past Labor Day. You know, we're starting a week later for the summer this year, but we could lose a week of the summer, the next summer, which we could solve just by starting before Labor Day, which we would like to. Yeah, we, we've had some unusual years, you know, with snow, or right? snow and hurricanes. I mean, admittedly, this year we've already lost seven days. Last year we had 11 days. The year before, I think we had 10 days. Um, not s mostly snow related, you know. I mean, this year is, is all snow. So it may related. just not be unusual anymore, given the you know, changes. <laughs> or maybe that next year we have, you know, we go to June 16th. You know, we may only great. have one day. But so, you don't you know. know. We, you don't know. Yeah. Right. You don't know. It, it is, though, you know, again, you know, this year we've got seven. So far, we're not using up any April. If Sorry. you know, and and you know, again, there's no guarantee we won't have additional snow days. Um, you know, so keep in mind the the length that goes out is conditional. It's not a given. So we do our, have our last day of school is not June 30th. It was June 15th or whatever. And we do saying. have that one day to play with next year too. We That's still have that one. That's you can always forgive a day. Yeah. One and, day. Uh, mm -hmm. 
And there was a push on the high school level for the last week to this for the for next year uh, to extend it. To the, yeah, the last to extend week. it. So yeah. the, the the main would it be fair to say that there was the AMA regional board that was the, the impetus for the change. Well, that was one of the impetus, but the, but the other superintendents also. I just think I, I hate to, but I think that very little happens the last week in June. And I'm sorry, I mean, I've had a lot of kids in the school, but the last couple of weeks in June, the kids are checked out. They're, we're not doing new units. I mean, it just seems silly to me to have kids potentially miss the start of camp. They're not really doing any major academic activities in June. On June 16th or June 22nd, I don't think we'll be getting much in the way of new learning lessons. Well, there, there should be. I mean, well, I don't I'm really just telling you. I mean, There's a I lot of videos that were watched last year. I know we can so, say that. But. So, so I think let's just you know kind of um, come around. The major concern is the extension <clears throat> two weeks into summer rather than one week. Correct. The general yeah. consensus is if school ends on the 15th, an additional five days in June, like this year, is what the people who have spoken have said they prefer, as opposed to going until June 30th and then batting off April vacation. That's so, yeah, that's right. so I think that maybe what, what we need, to, we have a motion um, to accept it as, as written. So we need to vote on that. And then if, you know, if we don't agree, <coughs> we can have an amendment to have you go back and say, regardless of the fact that we're all sharing buses and everything else, we would like you to, you know, to rediscuss this. Or I guess we're saying, you know, that at least, you know, we're considering that we would, you know, have a different schedule than the other schools involved. And we'd have to look into whatever costs that, that may Are occur. they making an accommodation to us with the 9-2 starting yeah. date? Yes. Yeah. So we may not have a lot of arguments. But I'd like so to move the question. You what? Move the question. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So, so. Any other comments? Oh, yeah. Another comment about that February long weekend. Yeah. Is that a trend that you're seeing across the state? Yes. Did you mention that? Yes. Well, it's a trend across the so state. So it's short. You're not going to yeah. want to push back on that. What were those dates again, please? And I anticipate. Can't Four guarantee, but I anticipate that the required calendar uniform. is going to reflect that. <coughs> so we're not trying to have a lot of changes too. Look, let me, I, what I can do is be honest with you. You have the power to vote. Um, I'm not sure what we would do if the vote board voted to go against this year because the other three boards have accepted the, uh, this calendar. Um, we do meet and we do discuss it from all different angles, and there's no matter what point of view you come up with, there's a reason for doing something else, too. And we try to come up with something that we think is going to, you know, synthesize everything and what's going to work. Uh, we, we, may be in the, we may be in such a situation where if we, if we don't have the vote, then we have to look. For, I worry about the uh, the transportation issue. But now, what do we do with? So you have to vote. Just one things. second, because Carl's going to have it. We have to <laughs> vote on calling the question. Okay. So, is there a second to calling the question? Uh, no. Ending the discussion. That's what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a second, second to that? There's no second. Sorry. The discussion continues. <laughs> All right. I forgot what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've done things. We've had days that have been different in the districts. Like, for instance, the, the Friday, Monday that I guess we all lost recently. But Amity has different days off than we have. You said the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. They have school. We don't. I mean, we, we do split the. We have different transportation needs. Well, sometimes. The, the day before Thanksgiving is an acknowledged split. The other one was a change. The calendars did match at the beginning of the year. There was a change to the Amity calendar <coughs> that was um, kind of done in an interim level. You know, when the new superintendent came in, the, the the coordination between the districts was maybe not the same, but the calendar was the same at the beginning of the year. That change was made without but all we, districts. I mean, but what what did we do for transportation? For those well, cases? we didn't have school. Oh, yeah. well, 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 what, what did we plan? We would have had we would have had, 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 had the buses. Yeah. We just yeah. have to pay for it. Yeah. So. Again, I think that what I'm hearing is that some people are asking that we go five days in June and take off of April. Again, assuming that we need all of that time. Um, so 
let's go ahead and well and before, let's before my, my my concern is I, I like the system that we have but the vote is a meaningless vote it's not going to change anything so that's not true well i don't know that that's I, true we could split from what the other districts did i don't know if people would want to pay for that it would cost money to get right it would cost yeah, money I, I would, and we don't know caution, what that would i would really strongly caution on breaking with the uh, both districts we're interconnected in so many ways and again, it's uh, everything in life is a compromise. And when yeah, you work, work with work with four di separate districts, the same thing happens. And some of the points of view here, I understand it's, it's valid from your point of view, but realize that there there are disagreements too, not only outside the district but within the district as well. I think what you're hearing also, come next year, is a frustration that this was sent out right already that's, that's without any point. comments from this board right. beforehand. So other districts, it was. Fate it complete when it came here. So I mean, I can tell you, I'm going to vote against it because I don't want to go to June 30th, and I don't think that we're benefiting our students by going to June 30th. Because I really, personally, believe that if my kids are going to be in school, I'd like them to be learning, and I really don't think that June 28th mm -hmm. we're going to get a lot of stuff going on in the school. And uh, if we're taking off so many days in February and March that we need to take away from April, the kids have been off enough. They've had a big enough break. I mean, they've got. How many days we end up getting in February? Six days off from a vacation we weren't supposed to have. So, okay. So, so again, I think we're at the point. Dr. Stella's recommendation is that we be consistent with the BOA district calendar. Um, that there would, and there's obviously discussion about about not doing that. So. So the motion right. is to, to, uh, the motion to, to approve, approve it as, approve as presented. It. All those in favor? We've got a tie. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Yes. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yes. Ooh. Pull that one out. <laughs> All right. But having said that, Dr. Stella, please give us input yeah. next year so that yeah, I think you can get a sense now that the board does not have with the, uh, unfortunately, next year, I, I will try to get a sense of the board and try to influence our region because there's going to be a mandated calendar next year. It gets and worse, basically. Right. Instead of the bow, we have the whole rest. My, my guess is going to mimic, mimic this one. But I will try to get a sense of the board, and I will try to share it on a regional basis. Okay, so you're still on, Dr. Stella. Okay, let me take a breath here. The new district website. Yeah. We haven't discussed yet. Okay. <laughs> okay, with the new district website, uh, again, uh, in December we were unexpectedly notified by website, the hosting service, that as of June. 30th, they will no longer be host, hosting school websites. Um, so we've had to get a process going very, very quickly uh, to come up with a new website. And fortunately, we have an excellent tech team. We put them in motion right away to start doing research on various uh, district, uh, not districts, but different types of websites. And we've narrowed it down to about two. And we'd like to come to the board next month with. Uh, without thinking on it as far as where we should go and what the rationale is for it. And um, we have to accomplish this by by the end of June. That's, that's when the change takes place. So uh, so we'll say more at the March meeting and we'll come to the information for you. So I, I just have a question. Sure. Are you talking about a, a, a significant content change or really just a, a format with a new well, it's, it's, the, it's the format, which is, uh, which is complicated. There are lots of choices, and that influences the type of content and the maintenance of it and all kinds of things like that, the cost of it, the maintenance of it, the training required for it, the timetable, how it affects our what we want to do with it. Uh, so we'll try to address all those issues and explaining where we think we should be going with this year. And I'll bring mem members of the tech team as well. Open choice. Yeah, open choice and the educator evaluation plan. Okay, those are the two that are on the agenda. Open choice. Um, the uh, 
we're looking for a motion to continue with our 12 slots that we have every year. We'll have one opening this coming year, um, and usually we, we start that child on the kindergarten level so that they'll be with us uh, right from the beginning. So I'm asking for approval. Okay. So move. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Any open choice? All those in favor? Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, the other thing I want to make sure I mention is that we will be, in fact, it's underway, the, uh, starting again the Beecher Road School Drama Club. And that'll be working with the Extended Day Program. Kathy Sonardi will be the director again. And I'm very fortunate to have Ashley Wagner, a very talented art director, who will be working with the, uh, with the <coughs> children. And children will be invited from first grade up to sixth grade to, uh, to just uh, participate in different, different roles and also stage hands and so on. It's been very successful in the past. We want to keep theater going. And we anticipate um, presentations to the community and to the parents in the in the late spring. So we're very happy to make that announcement. What play you're doing yet? Or no? Yes, the play is one of my all-time favorites, Peter Pan, Peter Pan. with Tinkerbell <laughs> <laughs> and Captain Hook. <laughs> so there, there'll be lots of parts for children, so which, which is an important thing. So that's uh, that's important. The S Superintendent's Parent Academy, as we promised. It's been scheduled for March 27th, and at that time we'll do what other districts are doing, and we'll take on the topics of Common Core Curriculum and the Smarter Balance Assessment. And uh, so we encourage everyone to come to that March 27th meeting. Okay, in the board brief, I think you said it was March 26th, but it's really the 27th. It's the 27th. Uh, Let's see. The 26th. The 26th. <laughs> it's a Wednesday. Okay, because in the board brief it said the 26th. It's the 26th that we have. That is correct. I'm sorry. And I put the wrong date here. The 27th is the open house yeah, at Bethany. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's where it was originally. Yeah, the 27th is the open house at Bethany. It was originally the 27th, 26th. So that um, we have a parent brief that's going out tomorrow. We'll have to say, just like the New York Times does, that there was an error. It's not the 27th, it's the 26th. So we'll send up a follow-up message on that. With the teacher evaluation plan, what we did is, uh, since we have five relatively new school board members who weren't here when we presented the original plan that was uh, approved by the board, and since the state has come up with a number of uh, changes and some flexibility items, we've scheduled, uh, with the board's cooperation, a special meeting on March 10th so that we could discuss it in more detail. And the administrative team and I will We'll do a review for the for the veteran board members and uh, an orientation for the new uh, board members, and also some of the uh, modifi few modifications that we are going to present based on new new information from Hartford. Uh, so that's scheduled for. Them. But what I would say now, just as uh, I don't want to get too much into it because we'll spend the whole meeting on the evaluation, is that again be aware of the fact that. The Woodbridge School District has had a very robust evaluation plan that we've had in prior years, um, uh, very comprehensive. So it wasn't uh, a challenge to, to <coughs> many aspects to go into uh, some of the aspects of the new plan. Some other aspects were challenging. Also, our administrative team is experienced. They are, very, they are trained in evaluation. They all have their own 92s. That means they've taken a number of graduate courses uh, devoted to that, as well as in-service type of courses. In addition, and I give them a lot of credit, they have, they've given generously of their time. They've spent a lot of time this summer, weeks uh, actually, um, going to training sessions, uh, trying to understand, interpret, and translate the, uh, the new mandates into our current robust system while trying to keep the vision that we have here at the school and, and really grow people, grow teachers. They've also, during this past year, on countless evenings, gone to ACES and other places for training uh, and for to, to look at this plan from different <coughs> aspects. Uh, the state has changed a number of things and that's why there's been countless new workshops and so on based on it. 
So, so we're very proud of them. And the fact that they have gotten off to a very good start with the staff. The staff has worked. We have a committee, professional development and, and a teacher education evaluation committee. So we get input from all sides. And, and just as the administrators, the teachers are interested in, in, in a uh, robust plan that grows teachers and, and impacts on student learning. So we're off to a start, and uh, everyone has had their uh, goal orientation, and, and the first round has been completed, and mid-years has, 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 has been, uh, the, the first, first round of in-class formal observations have been included, and that includes pre- and post-conferences, as well as classroom observations. Uh, we're in the, the administrators are in the process of reviews of practice, that's the non-classroom instructional observations. Uh, each teacher has completed a mid-year evaluation and that's always been a very strong aspect of, uh, of our plan here. Uh, the rubric has been implemented and uh, every teacher will have an end, end of the year goal conference and a complete end of the year reflection. No one is rated uh, according to the state mandate until the end of the year and that's, that's after all the observations and everything else that takes place. And I'll ask our two administrators if they want to add anything else to that. Sure. Without getting into too much detail, because again, we'll have that special meeting. Um, well, in the mid-year conferences that we are in the process of, all the teachers have done their um, mid-year reflections and meeting with the teachers and in the um, post-observation conferences. The conversations about reflective practice and teaching and learning are really what has been the most productive. Um, as Dr. Stella said, there's a lot of mandates and um, a little bit of minutiae with the actual plan, but what we do at Beecher and what we set out to do was to keep the rigorous evaluation <laughs> that we had and also allow for those conversations to happen. So I think I speak for us when I say that um, the teachers and the administrators agree that that's been the best part of the evaluation process. And as far as the ratings, um, we made that decision to have only summative ratings at the end of the year. And, but we're talking about those ratings with teachers as we go along throughout the year. Good. And again, at the, uh, at the March 10th meeting, whatever questions you have, mm -hmm. for the new members, you might, you might say, what is this plan? It says, you know, we'll, we'll go through all the different points of it. Again, we'll review it all and have whatever the type of discussion you'd like about it. Okay. Um, Mr. Prisco, would you like to say anything about the Beecher Road School update? So it seems like a long time ago since I last talked to the board, um, and the weather certainly has had its share of disruption, but the students continue to learn. So um, despite all of the interruption, I've been able to see an awful lot happening, as there always is. Um, in the science lab, students testing erosion was the topic of the day, and various tests and making observations and collecting data on what water does to the soil and different paths that the water can take and how that can affect different um, types of land. In fourth grade, as you know, technology is always abound here. I spent some time with some students doing some research uh, for their fourth grade biographies. Um, what was very interesting to me was in one of our fifth grade classrooms, the students were testing reaction times. And they were setting out on different, um, what would vary and what would change their reaction times. But then they were designing graphs to chart all of that collected data on their iPads. So who was spinning around and then trying to see how fast they could react to the action in the classroom. Multiple different um, perspectives and um, multiple different reaction times from our boys and girls. But um, first grade, I could would be remiss if I didn't talk about a very exciting event, the 100th day of school. So I got to do 100 exercises with some of our first grade students. And no matter what math question in the, regarding the tens place or the hundreds place that was given to our first graders, we could not stump them. And even after the exercises, they still had far more energy than me. <laughs> um, but I kept up and I did those. And also a thank you to our parents. We here at Beecher, we know that we want to be outside. And we want to be outdoor whenever we can. Certainly the weather has interfered with that on a few of the days, but whenever we can, we get the students outside. So we do appreciate what it takes in the morning to make sure there's hats, gloves, snow pants, snow boots, and kind of lugging all that in. But we want the students to have the opportunity to participate in whatever they can when they can go outside. So we thank you for that. 
And from snow to swimming, um, our physical education classes are in the pool are in full swing. So if you are here and you have the opportunity, um, certainly if your child is swimming in the upper grades, take a look. It is amazing. And it takes an awful lot of work and collaboration, um, not only with our teachers, but our physical education uh, teachers, classroom teachers, and the rec department. So we do appreciate everybody's support. Okay. Thanks. Mrs. Prisco, we're very proud of you. You are so energetic <laughs> and in top shape. I saw you doing those push-ups and those leaps and everything. So. I know. I had to uh, do the run around. I, mean, I couldn't wait to get by me in the first grade, but it was fun. So, <laughs> we have an excellent physical education department here. We're very proud of what they do with our children. So. And the way they tie it into academics is, is amazing. Okay. That's fine. You're, you're well, thank, you for wow. your, thank you. Thank you for your patience there. We covered a lot of topics. Okay. Uh, facilities committee. Karen is not here um, today, but we did not have a facilities committee meeting. Um, the weather schools canceled that day, um, so we didn't have a meeting. Yeah. Um, building committee. Um, I actually um, talked to Jeff Kaufman to see when the next meeting is, um, and he said within the next couple weeks, you know, the building committee will start up again. Um, and it's my understanding that they'll operate through the construction, um, you know, phase. So right now, um, they're working out the, the signing and the details of all the wording of the contract, but the scope of the project is what was defined and is, is what's included. Um, and I'll let you know, because I am planning on continuing to attend the building committee meetings. Um, so I'll keep you updated on that. Policy committee, Matt. Policy committee meeting has been written up the weather as well. Uh, we have not had a meeting in close to two months. Well, we uh, deliberately skipped January, right? That was our plan. Mm -hmm. Say all the details why we had a meeting in two okay, months, sorry, but we did have another reason besides yeah. the weather why we didn't have uh, okay. two meetings. We made amazing progress, though. Let me we tell did. you. We've almost completed all of, the, all of the review of the entire policy series. But so the, I guess the first matter is to. I make a motion to, that we move to accept the 3,000 policy series as presented. It was part of the packet for today's agenda. So, so second. Second. All okay, in all in favor? Okay, thank you. We're scheduled um, to have <coughs> our next policy committee meeting on March 6th at 6 o'clock. And I believe we'll be taking up the final policy, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Which is Final series, series, which is 6,000. 6,000. 6,000 or 5,000? 5,000. 5,000 for review as part of the consent agenda. That okay. is correct. Okay. That was gotcha. accepted for 30 days. Right. right. And so that would be the last one to review. And that's... Okay. And what, Matt? Is it over again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, okay. Well, Did you have anything else from policy, no. Matt? That's it. Okay. Um, <coughs> finance, Steve. You guys all approved all the statements, and we had the audit present. We went over that. It's all in the winds and all of the statements, so nothing new. Okay. We did meet them, and we haven't been snowed out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cave, Lisa, anything? Um, they've also been snowed out of their mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. our, our monthly legislative breath has been snowed out. Um, but the legislature is in session now. The gov governor's budget adjustments are going through. Cape says there's nothing unexpected in it. Um, still waiting to see what education initiatives are going to be pushed forward this session. Um, and then most notably, um, next Wednesday, March 5th, is the Cape Day on the Hill, to which they encourage all board members to come um, hear about what's going on legislatively that will affect our districts and go speak to our representatives who will lobby if anybody's interested. Uh, we have to register by Monday. Okay. And everybody's getting that information at home, right? Everybody's getting okay. Yeah. Right. Great. Okay. ACES, I didn't go to the last meeting, so <laughs> we didn't go to that one. Probably not because of snow. This didn't go. Um, New business, act on the healthy food certification for 1415. Move that we approve participation in the healthy food certification in 2014-15 for submission to the Connecticut State Department of Education. Second. Any discussion? Get a little bit of explanation. Sure. Yeah. Al, did you want to? Uh, this is a renewal of the district's agreement to participate 
in the compliance standards, assuring that it's a la carte. So this is not its regular entree meals. This is the ice creams and the snack types of um, items that the students purchase. That those items will meet the Connecticut state nutrition standards, which are slightly different and actually a little bit more stringent than the federal nutrition standards. By the districts agreeing to uh, participate in the program, we receive 10 cents per meal, um, which directly goes to the school lunch program, obviously benefits the program and the children in the end. Uh, the board does have the option and has exercised in the past to exempt after school, uh, afternoon and weekend activities from um, regiment being uh, regimented with the Connecticut nutrition standards and that is our recommendation in this renewal as well. And why is that? Things like the hoop <laughs> have cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> All about the cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. So and does it actually change our menu? At, at all? Considering well, we've been we participating we in it for so many years. Right, it doesn't change it. Right. We haven't had to change it. Right. Right. Keep in mind, this is related to the a la carte, right. so not the, the actual entrees. Um, we actually have had some menu enhancements to the school lunch program, and we continue to. Um, there are education shows and trade show sponsors we attend to, and uh, most recently we actually visited uh, another district to. You know, you can you compare notes, see what you're doing good, bad, and, and get ideas for enhancements. So again, all those uh, items are, are in the hopper and on the runway. Yeah, I'd like to commend Mr. Pulo and uh, Jane Roddy too. They have been traveling around to a number of districts, uh, including our middle school and uh, including the Bethany Elementary School, and again looking for uh, ways to improve here. Uh, one thing we're very proud of is that salad bar. So that's, that's one, of, one of the areas I look to very often. So we, we're, we're looking to improve in other areas, working through the Wellness Committee. Okay, is there any other discussion on this one? Yeah, all those in favor? Okay, great. All right, um, public comment, Marsha? Oh. Was there any public comment? Uh, no, there was not. Okay. So before we um, adjourn, Dr. Stell mentioned on the 10th, which is the um, special meeting for the administration um, teacher evaluation plan, we're also doing the finance committee earlier. So we're doing 630 to 7 630. for finance, because Steve's been running such a tight ship. We're out of there in five minutes. It does. Yeah. If it's OK, we'll have it here, the finance committee. Yeah. That just sounds like a piece. Great. Okay. Okay, and also we're going to have a very brief executive session after the the meeting. Yeah, so um, dealing with personnel. I think Today or two thirds. Right, right now. now. Right now. Yeah. Just for just a short. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have just to have personnel. a motion to go into. Motion to go into second executive session. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor. Okay, looks like we have to take a All right, so we're going to go ahead. Okay.